If I had to use for a subject this morning, it would be go after what's yours. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, go after what's yours. Come on, your neighbor didn't get happy enough for me. Look at him one more time and say, go after what's yours. And I really want to talk to some people that's ready to go after what's theirs. I don't know about you, but the enemy has been trying so many things in your life. And he's trying to make you think that what God has for you is not for you. But I really want you to begin to get yourself to a place where you get an attitude of gratitude to begin to say, Lord, I thank you for the ability that I can go after my stuff. Is there anybody in here that the devil has been attacking you? The devil has been trying everything that he can try. He's been trying to use people. He's been trying to use things. And sometimes if you really just be real, the devil has tried to use you. Y'all ain't talking. And, and tried to get you to look at yourself in the mirror and speak something that God did not speak concerning you. But tell somebody, my language is about to change. Because the reason why I got to get this attitude about myself is because it's time for me to go after my stuff. Look what the Bible says. Let's go to the first verse in verse number one. The Bible says, now it happened when a day... On a day that when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag attacked Ziklag and burned it with fire some of you this message is for you because severely you have been under attack is anybody in here today that you feel like you've been under attack come on this feels like that you've been in the fire that the enemy has done stole some stuff from you taken some things invaded your space come on don't act like you ain't like you ain't had no enemies invading your territory and the Bible says taken captive the women and those who were there from the small to the great but they did not kill anyone but carried them away and went their way and so David and his men verse 3 came to the city and there it was burned with fire and their wives their sons their daughters had been taken captive some of you today the Lord told me your daughters your wives your entire family is about to be set free Okay, maybe you ain't been praying for somebody in your family. Your sons, your daughters, your husbands, your wives are about to be set free because the enemy has had your family captive. But the Lord says today, I am setting your family free. Come on, can somebody decree that this morning that God is setting my family free? God is setting my children free. Come on, I'm talking to somebody that you got a son that you've been praying for and you've been saying, Lord, save my son. You got a son you've been praying for and you said, Lord, I need you to intervene. You got a daughter you've been praying for that has strayed away from the faith and you ain't saying, Lord, I don't know what else I can do. But God says you ain't got to worry because everything is about to change because you're going after what's yours. Somebody say no more captivity. The Bible says, watch this. They have been taken captive. Verse 4, then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voice and they wept until they had no more power to weep. I want to talk to some people this morning that you have found yourself in a place where you have been weeping until you had no more power to weep. Anybody in here that you have to put on a straight face when you come to church but when you're at home you are crying yourself to sleep at night you are worrying, you are stressing and you are saying Lord how much longer do I have to keep on dealing with the same old issues when am I going to ever catch a break? Come on, am I talking to anybody in here that it seems like every time you try to do right, the devil is always trying to knock you down. The more you try to live holy, the more you try to live righteous, the more the enemies attack you. Come on, is there anybody in here to say, I'm just sick and tired of dealing with the same old devils. I'm sick and tired of calling myself a believer, but it don't look like I'm one. It don't feel like I'm one. I'm tired of going through the warfare. I'm tired of going through the hell. I'm tired of being in the same fight. And here's the caveat. People that don't even serve and praise God, living better than I'm living, ain't living and ain't struggling at all, but I'm trying to serve God and I'm going through pure hell. Better yet, here's the question for those that want to know, inquiring minds want to know why is all this happening to me? <laughs> what have I done to deserve this type of warfare? Am I talking to anybody this morning? 
if you've been questioning yourself saying what in the world have I done to deserve all of this is it something that I'm doing wrong come on you don't ask people to pray for you and that didn't work you went down and you prayed for yourself and it still didn't work can I tell you that the enemy is just trying to wear you out and make you believe that what you are doing is not productive that what you are doing is not working but you can you just tell somebody I'm not going to stop praying I'm not going to stop believing matter of fact because the devil is still trying me I'm getting ready to go and take by force everything that God says is mine the Bible says David and his two wives all of them were taken captive and by and the Bible says in verse 6 now David was greatly distressed and the people spoke of stone in him because the soul of the people were grieved every man and his sons and his daughter but David here's what I need you to grab this people of God David strengthened himself in the Lord come on is there anybody in here that you need to begin to do what David is doing and begin to encourage yourself here's the problem you've been waiting on everybody else to encourage you that's why you look like you're baptized in pickle juice because you waiting on somebody else to validate you you waiting on somebody else to tell you you've done a good job I'm proud of you but baby can you look in the mirror and pat your own self on the back and say I am proud of me because when you wait on other people to tell you how good you are and you wait on other people to tell you what to do guess what you are under their control but ain't nobody controlling me y'all ain't talking David encouraged himself. The Bible, let me use the translation like I said. He strengthened himself. Anybody been feeling weak like the wind has been knocked out of you? Like you don't even want to continue to move forward? Come on, am I talking to anybody in here? And you're saying, why do I even keep trying? I keep on coming up short. I keep on losing. I can never catch a break. Why do I keep on trying? Why do I keep on doing this? Why don't I just go ahead and just quit? But David strengthened himself. I'm going to hang out right here on Strength Lane, Strength Avenue, because people need to understand that if you don't gather the principles and the understanding on how to encourage yourself, you're in bad shape. Because some of us are waiting on other people to validate us. We're waiting on other people to strengthen us. But David says, he says, he tells to his servant, he says, Abba, bring me my ephah. Y'all ain't talking in here. He says, I need you to begin to bring me my prayer garment. I need you to begin to bring me the thing that I need to begin to go in and talk to God face to face. Because when you are faced with trials, when you are faced with so much adversity, when things have been stripped from you, when things have been taken from you you got to get to a place where you can begin to ask God's permission you got to get to a place where you can hear the voice of God clearly because if you don't get to a place where you can hear God's voice you will always be open to hearing anybody's voice and everybody's voice that you have been hearing is not the voice of the Lord David says even though I've been afflicted I got to begin to seek after the Lord. The Bible says, because his soul of all the people was grieved, every man and his sons and his daughter spoke of stone and David. David encouraged himself in the Lord. Verse 7, David said to Abathar, bring me here. Watch this. Bring me the ephod to me. And Abathar brought eat the ephod to David. Verse number 8. So David did what? He inquired of the Lord. He inquired of the Lord. Everybody say inquired. That means that David's trying to figure out why this thing has happened. And see, here's the problem is, it's a bad situation when we don't know why we're going through what we're going through. And really, all we got to do is ask God, what was the original plan and intent for this thing happening to me? And God will explain it to you. Okay, you too busy asking yourself and you don't have the revelation. Y'all ain't talking. But the Bible says that David didn't just ask himself. He went and he inquired of the Lord. See, anytime you find yourself in a battle, you find yourself in a fight, just inquire of the Lord. Not your neighbor, not your friend, not your mama, not your daddy. Because guess what? They don't know why you're going through what you're going through. They barely know why they're going through what they're going through. You need to get to a place where you can say, God, why? is this come upon me and here's the problem why we don't know the answer because too many people are in our prayer closet many of us don't even have a prayer closet many of us just got prayer people 
which means people that we just go to for prayer. And watch this, really may not even be qualified to pray and release off of you what the devil put on you. David inquired of the Lord, saying, shall I pursue? Now, I want to begin to ask this question because this is, what, this is what confuses me a little bit about David. David, if you're going through so much, you feel like you've been attacked. You just had your wives, your children, everything stripped from you. Not just stripped, but the whole entire place, your whole camp got set on fire. And you asking God, shall you pursue after this army? The first question David asks him is, shall I pursue? Because you've got to remember, David is a fighter. <laughs> uh, my question is, can you still hold on to your fight even though you ain't got nothing left? Oh, I want to talk to somebody that will help me preach this thing. Can you still hold on to your fight even when everything has been taken from you? That's when the real anointing shows up. When everything has been taken, when everything has went wrong, and you say, Lord, I still got some more fight left in me. Shall I go after what's mine? The problem is we don't consult God. Even though we have the ability. Uh, I'm going to say it again. We don't consult God even though we have the ability. Okay. How many of you have been in, in places where people have done, done you wrong and you, you say, I'm going to call them and get them a piece of my mind? Did you consult God and say, shall I call? <laughs> when your neighbor, you told, that, told him, stop walking your dog and let him use the bathroom on my lawn. When he did it again, did you go and consult God? I know I had one in here. Did you, did you go and consult God and say, shall I go and cuss him out? No, you, you didn't do that. You just, you just went on and went and took your own consultation, took matters into your own hands, and said, you know what? I'm going to let them know that I ain't nothing to play with. And that's the problem. You're too busy trying to convince demons and devils that existed before your time that you ain't nothing to play with when really you need to understand and tell them that you got the God on the inside of you that makes you somebody not to be messed with. Because without the God inside of you, you ain't nothing but a civilian. So David says, I got to inquire of the Lord. He says, shall I pursue? Shall I overtake them? Now, here's the thing I love about David. And I know this message has been preached so many times. And it has went right over our head because we just want to take possession of certain things. But it's the attitude of David that I want you to begin to grab a hold of here. Even though David has to encourage himself. When you strip in yourself, it's almost like you just got to talk to yourself. Because when people saying something contrary to the word of God around you or in your circle, somebody has to talk to somebody. And so David looks in the mirror and he encourages himself in the Lord. The reason why you got to be encouraged first is because you can't go to God weak. Oh, my, my, my. And here's the problem. We always go to God with a complaining mentality. With a woe with me syndrome. God, I'm going through this. God, I'm going through that. Why is this happening to me? I'm so tired of going through this. And God is saying, will you get a backbone at some point? So David encourages himself. Before he even goes in the presence of God. This is very important. Y'all get this. He encourages himself. Gets what little bit of faith he has left. Lights a little fire. A little flame that he can within himself. So that he can go in and talk to God. At a level that God can understand. Oh. They missed that. They messed that. You, 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 that went right over somebody's head. Because God does not understand nothing but faith. God does not understand fear. Okay. So when David inquires of the Lord, he does not inquire from a place of fear. He does not even inquire from a place of worry. Or stress. He replies from a position of faith. 
So what he asks God is, he says, Lord, number one, do you want me to go after my stuff? That's the first question. The second question is, do you want me to overtake them? It's not a question of will I. He says, if you give me permission, I'm going to take it. <laughs> y'all, 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 see, y'all don't even understand when you are heavyweight in the spirit. Come on. I wish I had some Floyd Mayweathers in here that say, listen, I don't care what it is. I'll put any amount of money on the line because I'm undefeated. Y'all ain't talking to me. I, I serve an undefeated champion. And so because I serve an undefeated champion, I cannot be beat. He says, he says, Lord, I, I done got myself together. I done lost some things. I done chalked it up. It is what it is. Some of y'all can't get to that point. But you don't understand. I, done, I worked so hard for this. That's all the money I had. And they stole it. They left me. What am I going to do now? What am I going to do without them? The same thing you were doing before them. <laughs> the same thing you were doing before them. So you got to get yourself together. Look at your name and say, get yourself together. You got to shake off what happened. Yes, you took a hit. Yes, you took a blow. I know it hurt. But shake yourself off. And say, I took a hit, but it didn't kill me. I got some arrows thrown at me, but I'm still standing. And that's the biggest mistake the devil made, is letting you get away. You better tell the devil, you should have killed me when you had the chance. When you let me get away, you made the biggest mistake of your life. Because now I understand that I'm getting ready to take everything you stole from me, plus some. Y'all sit down, you're going to make me preach. I'm just trying to teach. What am I going to do? I'm going to consult God. What am I going to do? I'm going to have faith in God. What am I going to do? I'm going to look at myself in the mirror and remind myself of who I am. Y'all ain't talking to me. Because listen, if you don't remind yourself of who you are, people will always tell you who you are. And I came to tell somebody today, I don't know who somebody told you you are, but you are not who they say you are. You are exactly who God says you are. <laughs> David says, watch this people of God. David says, Lord, let me inquire. He says, Lord, shall I pursue? After the troop, shall I overtake them? So he's asking him a question of victory. He's not asking him, will he, can he, shall he, what's going to begin to happen? He's just letting God know, God, I know I can go and get my stuff if you just let me do it. The only reason I won't go and give them what is coming to them is because you want me to have mercy on them. Y'all ain't talking to me in here. So David begins to inquire of the Lord. And once God gives you the green light, see, y'all ain't talking in here to me. It's something about when God give you access to go get what's yours. Mm. Uh, because anytime you go and possess something, because God is always a God of, 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 of wrath. So he always gives the enemy what's coming to him. The problem is we go and pursue illegally with no jurisdiction. Y'all missed that. We go and pursue illegally with no jurisdiction. And so when we don't get permission from the captain, we can't just go and patrol the city that we don't even have dominion over. So you got to get access before you go into the next county so that you can have the authority to exercise your rights. Uh, when God gives you the authorization, the jurisdiction, you become unstoppable. He says, shall I pursue the troops? Shall I overtake them? He just asked God a question. And the question is always a question from the perspective of I can do a thing, not I can't do a thing. But God, I'm not going to do it without your permission. There's some things that you have the ability to do in your own strength that you still got to get permission from God to do. Okay. Watch what's happening here. 
God responds. Here's a problem right here. I like, I ain't going to mess with Shauna. I was gonna pull up. I was gonna pull up. She's not. She's not an English teacher. She just, you know. I just like dealing with her with English because she's a. She. She just got masters and stuff like that. And you know, I'm not that smart. <laughs> but there's a question mark, and after the question mark, there's quotation marks. Anybody know what that mean? Huh? A statement. Is a what? Yeah, end of his statement. So it means the end of his statement, right? So it means I can't do nothing until my question has been answered. After I made the statement, that's the end of it. Now, here's the problem. We can't hang out at the quotation long enough. Which means we can't wait until God responds. God, you taking too long. They done got away with my stuff by now. How long I got to keep dealing with this? How long I got to keep sitting here waiting? I done asked you, for, I asked you a year ago to send you my husband, send you send me my wife. And, I, and they said, I'm going to take matters into my own hands and go create my Ishmael. I've been praying to you. I've been asking you. And, and, and I gave you, I, I, but I'm, I'm in the quotation and you still ain't answered. The real test comes in when you can wait for God's response. Oh, my Jesus. Wait on his response. Now, there's an exclamation point there, which means the end of his statement, Shana done said it, Shana said it, got to be true. <laughs> and he says, now God responds, and he says, and he answered him. Now, I told you I won't, I'm not that smart. Now, here's another comma, and here's the start of quotation marks. What does it mean, Shauna? Beginning of a statement. Watch this. So you're telling me quotation marks means the beginning and the end of a statement, and you're telling me now that David made a statement, and now God makes a statement. Oh. Woo! I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good in my own self. So David makes a statement. His question is a statement. It's not just a question. A question that's not a statement would just have a question mark. Am I right about it? Am I right about it? Okay, I'm just double checking. So the fact that the question is not just a question, but it's a questionable statement. God replies. Based on what you made. Okay. Y'all remember the scripture in the word it says, it's according to thy faith. Huh. I said prior, and some of y'all ain't got it, God is granting your requests. This is what God responds. He says, and he answered him, question, makes a statement. He says, pursue, comma, but that ain't all. Comma means, wait, I ain't done, continuation, there's something else. So he says, pursue, which simply means, go after it. Comma, watch this, wait. For you shall surely overtake them, and without fail, recover all. So in other words... God says, I'm setting my faith into agreement with you because of the faith that you already have and the statement of confession that you have already made. So I cannot begin to respond with anything less than what you asked me for. That's why he does not repeat the same thing but say the same thing magnify in a different way. He says, yes, pursue, but not only that, you shall what? Surely overtake them. You already got the faith to overtake them, but I'm going to reinforce your overtaking and saying, surely. And he says, you're going to without fail, recover all. Mm. You're going to without fail, recover all. You're going to without fail. Recover all. 
Y'all didn't catch it. You're going you're to without fail recover all. Which means I'm going to reassure your statement of faith. That's why when you go through, you cannot stop speaking by faith. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. When you go through hell, how many times have you spoken by faith? And not spoken in fear, worry, doubt, unbelief, anger. But when you get in the step of faith and say, if God allowed this thing to happen, I'm going to get double for my trouble. I'm going to get more. He may have took that, but I'm going to get ten times more. Are y'all listening to me? Here's what he says. Pursue, you shall overtake them, and without fail, you're going to recover all. This is the season that you cannot fail in your recovery. Oh, you better grab that. You will not fail in going after what is yours. You better prophesy to your neighbor and say everything that you want to go get, you ain't going to fail at it. You're going to begin to achieve it. You're going to begin to gather the spoil. You're going to gather the increase. Everything the devil took from you, you getting ready to get it all. Y'all ain't talking. Y'all don't know when to shout and get your stuff. I'm getting ready to get it all back. So you ought to tell your neighbor, say, don't worry. Everything the devil touched to yours, I'm going to get it back for you. If you you too scared to get it I'll go into the enemy's camp and take what belongs to me because God has given us access God has given me the request and given me the permission to gather what is mine tell somebody I want my stuff so David <laughs> here's the thing you just talk to your neighbor and your neighbor ain't ready to go nowhere Everybody that David heard and David talked to couldn't go with him. The Bible says David went, he and 600 men who were with him, and they came to the brook of Besor, where those stayed who were left behind. But David still pursued he and 400 men. Mm. Half the men got left behind. My question to you is, when you get excited with your neighbor just a few moments ago and you just said, listen, we're going to get our stuff. They say, yeah, we're going. And the moment they get ready to go and the moment it's time to rock and roll, they say, no, I believe you just go ahead on. This ain't for me. I don't need it back that bad. I don't want it that bad. I'm, con I'm content right here. That that's for them for, oh, child, I'm just grateful to be alive. I, the Lord just let us stay alive. We ought to just give him praise for that. No, 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 no. Where is the violence? Where is the vigilance? Where's the more? Where's the attitude to take it by force? Where's the army that of the army of God that need to rise up and take what is theirs and you exercise your authority? Not them passive believers. That's just content with whatever life gives them. I don't know about you, but I'm not content with whatever life gives me. Life ain't gonna choose what I have. <laughs> Y'all ain't talking to me. You make it let life choose what it has for you. But guess what? I have control over this ram. And when he gave me dominion and power over this ram, life does not choose for me. I now choose life. And I choose it more abundantly. Look at your neighbor and say, what you going to choose? Are you going to choose to be passive? Or are you going to choose to go after what's yours? Here's the thing. The reason I go back, I keep going back to strengthening yourself because sometimes you get started going out the what's yours and then you let the other people around you talk you out of it. Uh, God got an assignment for your life and some of you letting people talk you out of it. Oh, y'all ain't talking. You excited about what God is doing, and you got other people questioning what he's doing. Oh, I feel like running. Why are you driving that far to that church? Because God told me to. Why are you still going? I, I don't agree. I don't care what you agree with. That's just you. Maybe it ain't for you, baby. You just stay at the brook of Becerra. I come back with the stuff. <laughs> I come back with the spoiler. Don't worry. 
You can't get upset with people that don't want to go forward. And you can't stay there with them because you will never get what God told you to get. And so many people abort our destiny because other people can't see it. Because what they see is flesh. What they see is natural things. They don't see what's taking place in the spirit. Hmm. Oh, I just heard the Holy Ghost. Could somebody be your test sent by the enemy? Could somebody be your test? And here's the problem we need to get delivered from. We got to stop coming to church with people. Oh, I said it right. We got to stop coming to church with people and start coming to church for God. Somebody may have came with you this morning, but you should have left them at the brazen altar. Some of y'all don't know what that is. I'll teach you one day. You should have left them at the, the gate. Okay. Did I just lose every? Did I, did I lose y'all? Study the Ark of the Covenant. Brazen altar, brazen laving. The inner court, the outer court. You should have left them in the outer court. It's okay for people to come with you, but leave them in the outer court. When you go into the inner court, it's small. It's no double doors. It's one way in, one way out. People got to find their own way into the presence. And the problem is, we got a whole lot of outer court Christians that have never learned how to go into the inner court and never begin to understand the presence. Because if you ever get into the inner court, that's the place where the flesh dies. That's why in the Old Testament, when the priest went in, they put bells on him because if he was not right, he would fall dead in the presence and they had to pull him out with a rope. Y'all ain't talking to me in here. Some of y'all just need to get into the inner court and let your flesh be pulled out with a rope. <laughs> and so we got to get to the place where we focus on God. I'm going to close. But my question is why do you come to church? Let me rephrase that. Why do you come to a building? Because you the church anyway. You can't come to yourself. You can come to your senses. And then unfortunately, some of us need to come to our senses. But why do we gather and come together in one place? To see who's going to come? To see how many people are going to show up? To see what dress they got on? What outfit they wearing this week? To see what we're doing new. Oh, we got a special program. That's why Easter Sunday, everybody come to church. Hmm. And I'm so sick of seeing every church got an Easter banner up. And it has nothing to do with a bunny. It's all about the lamb. But we got to be passive because the world know what is East. I don't care what the world know. It's going to always be resurrection for us. I'm not conforming to that. Oh, Jesus. But why do we really come together? Is it a social club? Is it because you're tired of being single and maybe you can find a good woman at church? Find a good man? Why do we really come? We should be coming to have an encounter. And when we come only to have an encounter with God, there's nothing that nobody else can do to remove me from that presence. Oh, Jesus. Because if you're looking for excuses to lead a church, guess what? I'll be the first one to go. I'll go first. I can give you 101 reasons right now why I shouldn't be here. 
not, not shouldn't be here, why I don't want to. One of them may just because I don't like dealing with rebellious people. People that just don't follow simple instructions. That bothers me bad. But I can give you 101 excuses why I should leave this church. <laughs> why I shouldn't even come. How many of y'all say before you get oh, I don't feel like going to bed. I'm so tired. I'm so tired. Try, try going to bed at 3 o'clock in the morning, getting up at 6, and then coming to church. And then you tell me you're tired. Baby, you don't know what tired is. When you get tired of the hell and the fight you're going through, you wouldn't care about sleep. Because you'll say, if I got to pray for 15 hours to get this devil off of me, I do it. Y'all with me? Desperate things cause for desperate measures. Desperate measures cause for desperate things. Have you got desperate for God yet? Were you so sick of your situation that you are willing to stay on your face until God's hand begins to move? Jesus. Where's the sacrifice? Y'all can put a smile on your face. I'm not beating you up at him. I'm just trying to help you. Yo. Because when you get to this place where you start pursuing after God, you have no room for anything that's trying to pursue you. Because here's what you got to understand. Something's pursuing you. It's just a matter of what it is. But as long as you ain't pursuing it and you pursuing God, it got to pursue you wherever you go. So if there's a demon after you, sooner or later he got to get delivered or go back to the pit of hell where he came from. And that's why we got to stay in the presence. And say, so you know what? I want more. I want more of the anointing. I want more of what God has for me. Church is not a social club. I'll say it again. It's not a social club. The problem is you, you want friends. And it's okay to have friends. Well, my, the old saints used to tell me this back in the day. Boy, you ain't got no friends. You got associates. You got people you associate with. You really ain't got no friends. Because the real test is whether you got a friend or not is when all hell breaks loose. And many times you're the only one standing by yourself at the end of the day. When you're going through the worst of the worst, them so-called friends ain't nowhere to be found. But who's still there when you're going through? God. He said, now you done got rid of everybody, let's go do it for real. Have anybody really just experienced that on a small level that once people walked out of your life and you cried, you, oh, you went through a tough season for about a month, and then after you finally got yourself together and God started working on you, you got better than before, and then here come them same people that walked out of your life, oh, child. Oh, you didn't think I was going to survive it? Or maybe y'all ain't never had nobody like that. Maybe you ain't experienced that Mike Jones or knowing back then they didn't want you when you got hot, they start getting all on you. Y'all don't know that? Okay. Maybe y'all ain't never experienced it. When you was broke, didn't nobody want to be around you. Now you done got a little wealth in your, and everybody, hey, man, hey, I'm your friend. Hey, what's going on? What you doing? They calling you. I just seen how you doing. Why you ain't called me like that before I had something? I'm just calling to check on you. No, you got a motive. <laughs> Am I talking to the church? Watch this. Oh, they took my word before I got done. No, no, no. Go, go down. Go down to the uh, verse 20. I think it's verse 20. Y'all move quick with me. The Bible says it right here. Then David took all the flocks and the herd. Before that, it says David went on and he recovered all. David took the flocks and the herds. They driven before those other livestock and said, this is David's spoil. I wanted to read that last verse because the spoil was labeled. Not the ones that got left at the brook. Not the ones that spoke of stoning David. The one that sought after the Lord. It was called his spoil. 
Some of you, God just named your spoil. God just named your stuff. Can I go ahead and prophetically release this to about 15 people that will grab it? Your stuff. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. <laughs> Everything that the enemy took that has been placed in lost and found has your name on it. Let me get you one even deeper. The Bible speaks of it as spoil, which means there's going to be more left over that wasn't even taken from you. Because you're not the only one that the enemy is trying to get stuff from. So whatever the enemy has gathered based on your confession of faith, God said it's going to be yours. Which means you get ready to claim the spoil of other people's stuff that didn't have the faith to pursue. Tell somebody, I got the faith to go get it. Some of y'all got to get that attitude this week and say, I'm going to get it. I'll never be broke another day in my life because I'm getting ready to go get it. I'm getting ready to go get the education I need, the certifications I need, the business licenses I need. Come on, I'm getting ready to go and do what I got to do to get what is mine. I'm not going to keep living the same old blanket life. I'm going to live the life that God has for me. How many of you do a creed that today? I'm saying I'm going to live the life that God has for me. Hallelujah. Listen, let's pray. I want to pray for you if you need prayer in this area. And you say, Lord, I want to go after my stuff. I want to take it by force. And here's the thing. Sometimes you don't even know what's been taken from you. Because sometimes the enemy will come in and take things that's small. That you don't even identify with. The Lord says your eyes are going to be open to things that the enemy has stolen from you. And I want to release that anointing of the go-getter today. I want to ignite the grind in you today. The uncompromising anointing to go get what's yours. The altar is open when you come quickly. Hallelujah. But I might see Jesus. And as you come to this altar, just lift those hands. And the first step is inquiring of the Lord. And as you are here, just go ahead and start inquiring of the Lord. And say, Lord, should I do this? Should I do that? You know what you need God to do. You know what you've been questioning in your life. You know what you've been desiring for the Holy Spirit to do. Come on, every mouth should be open. Start talking right now. Come on, start speaking, decreeing, declaring, opening up your mouth. Come on, you need God to do this thing today. You need God to deliver today. You need God to turn it today. Father, we give you praise right now. Father, we release that anointing to pursue after what is theirs. Father, everything that has been stolen, everything that has been taken, God, release that anointing right now to locate the miracle, locate the blessing. Father, I decree and declare that there would not be any procrastination. I cancel the spirit of procrastination now. I cancel the spirit of delay now. And I decree and declare that as they stand with hands lifted before you, O oh God, that God, you move on their behalf, that you grant their requests. And just as they are standing here, Lord, give them the strength to encourage themselves in the Lord. When they're faced with challenges, when they're faced with adversity, give them the strength to encourage themselves and to pursue after their thing that has been taken from them. And I decree and declare that not only shall they pursue, but they shall overtake and recover all. Father, I release the recover all anointing. 
They shall recover finances, recover healing, recover businesses, recover ideas, recover everything that has been stolen from them. Satan, we command you to loose it now. And we decree and declare that the spoils of God's people belongs to them. We decree and declare, Lord God, a spiritual GPS to go and locate our miracle, to locate our progress, to locate our stuff. We decree and we declare now that every spirit of the emptier, every spirit of the destiny destroyer must be uprooted and derailed by the power of the living God. 